everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to be programming in MIPS, which is a great beginner's assembly language. It was also used in the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation 2, which you would know if you watched my video on Pokemon and Game Boy programming, which I highly recommend you watch, especially if you're not really familiar with assembly. And while I totally encourage everyone to try out this tutorial, it might be a little bit more difficult if you're not familiar with C, C++, and some basic concepts of computer architecture. So there's some open courseware material in the description. Highly, highly recommend that you check that out and work through that stuff, especially if you want to be a programmer. I swear I use these concepts every day, but let's just get started. So today we're using a tool called Qt Spim, and you can download this on a Windows, Mac, Linux, any system. And this is really useful for loading MIPS code and debugging it. So this tool looks a little confusing, but the two things to be aware of is one, this thing on the left will show you what all of your registers are doing and what values they hold. And this thing on the right will let you debug and step through your code and watch how your registers change. But just to make sure everything's working, you should have a file just installed by default called hello world.s. It should be in your program files, Qt spam hello world.s. So just say file and then load file, hello world and then press play open up your console and if your console's not showing make sure it's checked in this tab and it will say hello world it's just making a syscall to print the string if we were to implement this from scratch in mips it would be considerably more complicated so that's why we're not going to go through this code but if everything's working your console should print hello world but today we are going to look at a C code snippet and translate it into MIPS, which is what I would recommend you should do if you don't know how to get started practicing. Just find random snippets of C code and practice translating it and making sure you get the right answer. So this snippet doesn't do anything all that important. We just have um, a value and we're adding I to it on each loop of i. So we have our number of iterations, our counter, and our value. Even though we don't use this iterations in the loop, you'll see why it's important to define it. And then we have our loop, it goes 10 times, adds i to val 10 times. So this is what it should look like, 17 plus da 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 equals 62. Now to translate this into MIPS, this first part is just a label marking that the main is starting. And you see we have three labels, main, loop, and end. And you'll see why these labels are important in a minute. First, we are loading all of our values. So these three lines correspond to these three lines. Our first command is load immediate. This means that we're loading a value directly to a register. So in this case, we're loading 10 directly to T0. This is as opposed to loading the value from a different register into this register. We're just loading the number, we're not loading a register. Okay, and you'll notice that all of these registers are T0, T1, T2. That stands for temporary, and it means we can just use them to do operations and for whatever we need. There are other registers like A0, A1, A2 that have different functions. So it's really important to understand uh, the conventions for the registers you're working with. So we've loaded our three values, 10, 0, 17, and then we start the loop. The way loops work in MIPS is that you have some sort of counter. In this case, it's T1. You add one to T1 at the end of the loop, and then you say jump, that's what the J is, jump back to the loop label. So in general, for any loop, you just need a counter, and then you add one to the counter, jump back to the loop, and then this right here is branch if equal. So this is saying that if T1, our counter, equals our number of iterations, then jump to the end. And then this right here is 
the body of the loop. So for any loop you're trying to program, just follow these basic conventions. Branch if equal, add, jump. And then our body is simply t2 equals itself plus t1. And notice how this is add and not add immediate. Once again, an immediate is adding the number one instead of putting one in a register and adding it to the register. Uh, whereas add is just adding register values only. And then we jump to the end. This is just an exit command. Don't worry about it. But let's make sure that this program works. So we're going to save. And you probably have to quit out of Qt spam to reinitialize. It's annoying, but I've just found that to be true. Um, go to our files and we have MIPS practice. Okay, so just press play. And the way you know that something happened is you go to your int reg, <laughs> this tab right here, and go down to T2, which was our value, if you remember. T2 had 17, now it's at 62, which is what we calculated the right answer to be. And you can see I is at 10 and our number of iterations are at 10. So this is all what we would expect our program to do. And if you're not seeing this like I am, make sure that your registers are marked to decimal instead of binary or hex, uh, unless you would like it in the other input formats as well. Now we're going to learn how to set breakpoints and step through our code. So make sure you load and reinitialize the file or quit and reload the program. Then look at your code over here. Make sure it has like your same comments and it's not just the system code. Sometimes that mixed me up. And pick the line you want to set a breakpoint at. So I'm going to do it at where we add one to the counter. I'm going to right click, set breakpoint, and then we're going to press play. So the execution stopped here. You can see that um, we're still at zero. So it's the first iteration. If we single step, and then you can press this uh, numbered button over here to continue to single step and just watch those registers over there. Um, and you can see them, uh, the numbers increase as we would expect. So let's just do one more. And so, yeah, we had I equals three. We added 20 plus three is 23. And as your code gets more complicated, this becomes a much more useful feature. So I hope this was helpful in helping you guys set up. Let me know if you want to see more examples and more assembly code stuff. But in any case, have a happy day wherever you are, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.